Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, I want to put document.write in its proper perspective because I see many JavaScript textbooks start with this in chapter one. And we very rarely use document.write in a professional real world, and I think there's a better way to explain what document.write attempts to explain in these chapters. So here we have just a real basic web page. It's rendered over here. Paragraph one, no surprises there. And then paragraph two is created through this document.write method that, again, is so popular in chapter one of so many different textbooks. And so immediately you start scratching your head as to why did we do this? If all we want is paragraph two inside of P element, why did we not just put paragraph two there? Why are we using a script? And I think the answer to that is because the author is attempting to make it easier for you. But sometimes learning JavaScript the easy way actually confuses things. But I think what they're trying to explain is that when you write JavaScript in a web page, you put it in script tags. OK, that's easy enough. And here's the JavaScript statement. The document you can think of as the web page itself. And then write is a method. And as with many languages, the method has parentheses where the information that the method uses to process goes. In JavaScript's case, the information inside the method, if it's a string, needs to be delimited by apostrophes or quotation marks. And JavaScript statements are typically ended with a semicolon, although it's actually optional. I think what the authors are attempting to do is to put in a JavaScript statement, the simplest JavaScript statement that they can think of, into your script so that you can see the object, dot, method, parentheses, string, and semicolon syntax with the most concise statement they can think of. However, because it has no purpose in life, because you would just put paragraph two there in the real world if you wanted paragraph two, that's where the confusion comes in. Let's keep going and unravel this a little bit further. Here's my paragraph three, and I've ID'd it as P3, and it's got all these asterisks. But still, you only see paragraph three here on the web page. That's because of the JavaScript below, which we'll go through. Here's my button, click me, and here is another script. So often, these little examples where you start out in JavaScript will have multiple scripts on a page. Now, that's not really real world either. Typically, what you're going to see is the SRC attribute used and a JavaScript file referenced inside that opening script tag. And the reason why we want to pull all of our JavaScript into an external file is really the same reason why we use external CSS files, so that we can more easily edit and maintain the code and reuse the code on multiple web pages. So typically, you'll see a script file with all of your JavaScript pulled out of the web page, not inside these script tags inside the web page in a production setting. And we typically put it right before the closing body tag so that the entire web page, any elements, the DOM, the document object model, has loaded before we attempt to use JavaScript to manipulate it. So this is the production way that you usually see a script, not scripts inserted inside various places in a web page. But that's often how I see chapter one of many textbooks written. All right, let's go through this little script here that is in the web page. Document the web page, get element by ID, a method that looks at the ID P3. So it's looking at this paragraph three and setting its inner HTML property, assigning that to this. So that's what creates paragraph three. As this web page is read, this gets replaced with this. In line 16, we've declared a function called p4. And when that JavaScript runs, the p4 function is read, but it's not yet executed. We could execute the p4 function by merely calling it p4 run. But instead of doing that, we've assigned it the p4 function to the document get element by ID, this button, this on click property. So this statement says, when this button is clicked, run the p4 function. And so let's save and refresh and try that, click me. And now we're seeing this is paragraph four, this is paragraph four, which is in the p4 function, overriding our entire document. And why is that? It's because of document.write. Document refers to the entire document. It's replacing all the content in the body with this is paragraph four in p tags. 
Now, it didn't happen in paragraph two because of the way JavaScript is read in the web page. And at this point, when we read this script, this document dot write, the rest of the code has not been parsed yet. So in this case, paragraph two just lines up after paragraph one, and then we go on and read the rest of the code. By the time we click this button, however, everything's been read. When I click the click me button, which runs P4, which runs this function, the entire document is going to be rewritten with this document dot write statement. So that's another reason why it's just a proof of concept type of statement. It's very rarely used in the real world because it overwrites your web page once the web page has been completely loaded, which is very rarely what you want to do. Instead, I would encourage you to replace all document.writes that are used for proof of concept with console logs. And let's just do that and see the difference. Paragraph 1 has been rendered, of course, and then this script, console log paragraph 2, I have to right click, inspect, and open my console, and here we see paragraph 2 in the console. And so what the console can give you is the same proof of concept that your JavaScript is running, but it doesn't impact the web page itself. Moreover, the console is the professional's way of logging out information, variables, debugging their code. The console also provides very valuable error messages when you have an error. So the console is enormously more helpful than how document.write is used in most chapter ones of most textbooks. If I click the click me button, which is going to run function four, now we're console logging out, this is paragraph four, instead of adding it to the web page and rewriting everything else that was on the web page. Document.write, helpful in only a handful of situations and mostly confusing in chapter one. Use console log, I promise you, it will be your best friend. Thank you.